it's absolutely freezing is the first thing i want to tell you about this morning it's been snowing outside and to put that into perspective yesterday uh, i burnt my head in the back garden so it's a real change in the weather but we are going to test um it's a new iron that's come out on the back of the zx5 and zx7 from srixon bit chunkier um class it in there or put it in that category of game improvement iron it's a hollow body iron with a forged face so very much in the kind of vein of the p790 type of club we're going to see how much different this is from zx7 and zx5 who it might appeal to and um how it performs in the hands of an average golfer can you get the shutter open i think what we'll do is we'll just get a, um we'll get a bit of a warm up if you ever get them shut the doors open Left first, righty tighty. No. Today's video is uh, cancelled due to the fact that I uh, can't get the shutter door open. If anyone lives local to um, Four Golf Chester, has any experience in uh, shutter doors then uh, give us a shout. But the light doesn't come on when you press the right button does it or is it always oh, no. like that? But now I see maybe it should come on. We fixed it. So just to clarify, <laughs> Anna resolved the issue with the uh, key fob. The brains. Although I think me and Steve took the credit. Yeah. Right, so wall off is done and uh, I've been hitting some balls and collecting some data and uh, already the first thing to mention, this is a, these are strongly lofted, they definitely fall into that game improvement category. Like I said on the intro, um, forged face but uh, not what your classes are forged iron. And I've got to say from the initial testing inside at least, they definitely have nothing like the kind of uh, feel that came out of the uh, ZX5 and ZX7. So don't be thinking these irons are anything like those other two because uh, seriously they're not. And when I say nothing like, they're nothing like in terms of their form and they're nothing like in terms of their feel and their sound. But they're not intended to be. Don't forget, this is very much uh, a different type of iron. It's built around... Uh, a CG placement which is going to give uh, help with launching this ball. It's got a massively wide sole. It's got a thick top line and it's got that V sole. Uh, I think that's what they call it in terms of the shape. We took it outside and again I hit a number of balls from the turf and I've got to say one thing I noticed straight away. Very different than what I was hitting on the firm lie of the mat. So again off the turf and I have no idea what VSOL does in terms of its interaction but it certainly seemed a little bit different in terms of the contact that I made off a mat almost always seem to be making some kind of contact with the mat and I'm somebody who picks the ball fairly clean off the surface bit different from like I said out there on the turf ball flight is uh, noticeably strong again in terms of that loft I didn't particularly find it a high launching ball which I'd be expecting from these things so at this stage of the testing, a few surprises. What I'm going to do is, well, uh, as ever, I'm going to hit some balls now and try to give you some feedback um, or some more feedback. But I'm also going to take it out onto a little bit of a challenge and see how it performs at the end of this video. So make sure you stick around for that.
Right, the first thing of note is, like I said, uh, the, the looks. And from the back end, there's a bit of uh, sort of shiny chrome. I think it's a decent looking iron. Uh, but from the top line, like I said, it is a bit thick and the bottom is as well. All I'm comparing it to when I, uh, there's two things in my mind and it's comparing it to like so the P790, which I think is a sort of direct comparison. But I'd almost liken it to the kind of uh, Cleveland uh, do a UTX or was it UHX iron that I recall. And again, very much a sort of um, quite a chunky body hollow body exactly the same as this and I think in terms of sort of sound and feel I'd put it more into that category it's nowhere near as um, good in terms of feel and in terms of sound as the likes of the P790s it doesn't come close for me so it's a real change from where like I said ZX5 and ZX7 I was literally couldn't speak highly enough about those irons in terms of well all around how they perform but the feel was so good they haven't got that right with this uh, in my opinion there's some tungsten weighting in there and again whether or not it's a mental thing but for me as soon as that tungsten weighting goes in it can make a big difference to the sound and feel I noticed it with the kind of again drawing parallels the kind of Callaway DCB they had tungsten weighting but managed to sort of uh, dampen that sort of feel and sound um, in a good way I'm not sure they've done that with this and um, let's just see if we can pick a bit of audio when I hit one. Joe Artie, that was probably, it was a nicely struck iron that was definitely straight out the middle and was one of the softest shots and uh, slightly contradicted what I've just said. Um, having said that, like I said, my overall feeling for the club is just they haven't quite got it right. And I think they've got a kind of tough job on here because they've gone away from what was so pure about the ZX5 and ZX7s that when I did the videos, I was quite surprised just how good they were and a lot of people commented who bought those clubs since have said exactly the same. The way I see this sort of sitting in is in a blended set is the only place I would see this is kind of like in a four and five iron if you wanted something a little bit easier to kind of hit. And I'm surprised a little bit at the ball flight as well. It's not quite got the launch angle I would expect from this kind of iron where you perhaps um, again, comparing it to previous mo uh, other models rather that I test from different uh, brands, this type of iron is really sort of uh, skyrocketing. I haven't seen the data as yet, but I don't think that is going to be the case in launching at 17.2, that last shot I just hit. And again, that's relatively low for, um, for a 7 iron, and I would have a few concerns with that. How it's going to do in terms of spin, we shall see at the very end. But for me at the moment, it's uh i don't know it's kind of like uh, well that's a terrible shot it's kind of just it's just it's missing on certain bits for me as ever this is one person's opinion what really interests me is uh, kind of have you tried these because uh, i believe they're in store and ready to try right now so i'd be really interested in a bit more uh, feedback from yourselves and see uh, am i having a particularly off day am i uh, but because right now i'm struggling to see exactly where they sit and uh, what kind of golfer it's going to prize away from. I, I always think with Strixon, first of all, they've got a bit of a job to do in terms of, they're not for me the first brand that you would think of in terms of irons, and therefore they've got to prize you away from your kind of loyalty to other brands or your perception of other brands. Now with the forged offerings, and I'm always going to keep comparing it with the ZX5 and ZX7, there's a real good reason why you would change your existing irons into them. And that was because of the exceptional feel that was unreal. I don't really see what these irons do in that same way, if that makes sense. So comments down below. The data is collected for this club and I'll go through at the very end, uh, but before we get to there, we're going to set up uh, a little bit of a challenge. We've moved holes on Paris International. Uh, we've gone to the 18th as a par five. It's an amazing finish. I mean, uh, Trackman has introduced me to some incredible golf courses and this finish, uh, what would be Probably your uh, third shot into this island green at uh, Paris International, a Jack Nicklaus design course, and there is no miss whatsoever. We've actually set it up at 184, which is a bit longer than what I would have set it up, but this plays so real. We're playing downhill, and uh, like I said, Trackman really takes everything into account, so this should be about the number, what we're looking at. Anyway, three balls is the challenge. Uh, let's see how good we can do with these irons. I think that's quite a good start. Whether or not I got enough of it, it's a bit of a left to right shot. 
um, but it's right at the flag. Is that enough carry? This could be really good, you know. This could be really good. Oh, I just needed another yard of carry. I had a feeling it was just a little bit thin, um, but a great start. And that, like I said, 172 carry, which was bang on the number, and a great spin number as well on that. So that'll take some beating. Oh, do you know what? That's quite good as well. I could just have a little bit too much cut, has it? It's going to be a longer carry, so we'll definitely carry the green, I would think, with that. It was a better strike. Oh, now almost identical. Almost identical in terms of carry. And to be honest with you, if I was playing into this green uh, for real, yeah, 172 carry, 6-6 six, six spin. Real good numbers on both of those. So, let's see if we can finish with anything inside of those two but three out of three would be a real result in terms of hitting the green nah i've just literally cut that one out to the right i think that could be enough to go into the water or will it hang on and grab a little piece for three out of three oh it is it's held on it has grabbed a little piece uh i've be, got to say i've been what do we get there 173 carry six six spin so great consistency in terms of uh the numbers we produced on there, six and a half thousand revs and more, almost a yard separating them in terms of, I think, was it 171 to 173 carry? I've just noticed there's an elephant appeared on the left of the screen. I'm not sure what that's got to do with Paris International, but somebody will no doubt know. Um, so, three really decent shots into, uh, into that island green. There is nothing you could complain about on that basis. Right, a bit of a different backdrop to do our evaluation, but uh, I've had time to sort of go through the numbers and have a, a little look, and I'll throw those up in front of you now. Um, you've seen all the data that I collected, and take your time and have a, have a read through it. There's lots of variables in there, and I think to be fair to Strixon and these irons, maybe my performance wasn't the best on the day, so I think we've got to pay some attention to that. Um, but I'm going to just look at those averages down the bottom and don't forget this is a, an iron, a 7 iron that's lofted at 28 degrees, it's extremely strong lofted, ball speeds were 113 which again are quite disappointing on average to be honest with you, 5-4 spin was a very good number for a, um, an iron that's uh, lofted at 28 degrees, 161 carry. Again, honestly, I'd expect it to have been further. 17.6 launch and 44.9 degrees in terms of land angle. And I think those last two numbers, again, bore out in terms of what I was seeing. That's a relatively flat ball flight and that descent angle isn't great either. So, like I said, I always try to be sort of balanced with my opinion and views and I'll, I'll no doubt I can consider the fact that maybe my performance wasn't fantastic, but then I suppose this is the type of iron you'd be looking at for when your performance isn't that great. So they kind of like, they, I, I can't help but feel a little bit disappointed in what they do and I suppose considering they set the bar so high with the ZX7 and the ZX5s in, fives in terms of them, their performance, then for me, these are kind of a, a non-starter because I jumped straight into those uh, ZX7s or ZX5s because A, they were just as easy to use, they launched the ball better, they felt a hundred times better and the overall performance was, like I said, in terms of carry distance, was, was the same with a better spin. So, yeah, uh, not the greatest for me, but again, that's just very much a personal opinion. So the idea is, as I always say, you go out, you try them yourself, and if you find out differently, then uh, maybe I got this one wrong, but not a, uh, not for me this time around. Anyway, as ever, thank you for watching. Uh, plenty of vids up this week, so uh, keep on. Hit that subscribe button, and let me know again, another big thing, if you can check. I've said this at the end of the video, so maybe a little bit late. Keep an eye on that notifications bell, because again, I'm getting lots of stories where people are not getting notified of when videos are being posted, which is always a little bit worrying, so uh, keep an eye out for that as well. Right, I'll see you all very soon.